Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 6. Now we command you, brothers, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you, that, <clears throat> that you keep away from any brothers who walk in idleness and not in accord with the traditions that you have received from us. It was a normal voters meeting in every way possible, except in the voters meeting, someone had the idea that the pastor wasn't working hard enough. I have no idea how you judge my work. If I work hard enough, not hard enough, I do not know, and I'm not asking for input uh, <laughs> at all. <laughs> I'll do my best. Anyways, so an old man gets up and he says to the group, uh, I think we should put a time clock in the church so the pastor can check in and check out with the, with the punch cards. And then the president of the congregation stood up very quickly and he said, just before we vote on this, and even seconded, understand we can't afford this. And someone said, the time clock. And he goes, no, the wages of the pastor, for he will push the clock to start and he will never ever punch out. I don't bring this out to bring about ministers or myself, but to say that in truth, we Christians have the exact same thing. At your baptism, you punched in, and then that's it. There's no one who is going to fill in for you while you take a week off from Christianity. There is no one there. You are it day in, day out. At your jobs, at the schools, in your cars, it matters not. You will and always have that vocation of Christian. We get to fulfill the rest of our days working in the kingdom of God. And it is good work. It is good work. Since we're celebrating Veterans Day, I'll have to say that in our text today, there is a word that is actually a military word. And it's, it's a military word that the, the Romans and the Greeks would understand. They're military that we translate it the best we can. But the word is idleness. Now you think that doesn't sound like a military word to you. And it didn't to me either. But the word actually means disorder, not in line. And it's a military term. It was the military, it came from there. Paul's using a military term. Disorder, not in line. I remember very clearly as I was at chaplain school at Fort Jackson that we had a two-day weekend coming up and all we had to do was pass an inspection. Oh. But we were all older men. None, we weren't 18-year-olds. We were 28, 29, 30 up to 51. Uh, you, you've never lived until you see a 51-year-old running in military formation. Whew, God bless him. That's four years older than me. Anyways, but we wanted our leave weekend. We needed our leave weekend. So we spent hours and hours of our own personal time to make sure everything was in order, especially the uniforms. No threads were shown, crosses proper angle, nice and shined up, everything had to be gone. We'd go over and over it with everybody, hours and hours of our personal time so that when the inspection comes, all they could say to us, and they were not happy about it, was, it's in order. It's not in disorder but order. The military loves order. And then they had to do the most amazing thing possible. They had to give us our leave weekend. <laughs> you see, Christ, or Paul is saying here, is when your life is in order with God, it's not worse, it's not harder, it's actually better. You receive more. It is a better way to live. And just to make sure we get this all straight in our minds, We're, there's no such thing as a lazy Christian, or there shouldn't be anything of a lazy Christian at least. To the people who Paul was writing to in the church in Thessalonica, there was an interesting dynamic going on. Oh, I love this, honestly. These men in Thessalonica, they had figured it out. 
Oh, so what they had figured out is they could have their slaves, their children, and their wife do the physical labor, and they would go to the marketplace and talk philosophy. Oh, sign me up. But I don't think my wife and children would sign up for that at all. But really what was going on is when they went to the marketplace to talk philosophy, they became busybodies, right? They were gossiping and talking and wasting time. And just so you know, I know the stereotype in America is that women are the ones with these issues. But in my experience, the men have these issues in spades. In fact, where I came from, where I used to be, go at nine o'clock to the la local cafe and the, ca the ch table with nine farmers and bib overalls, listen to that conversation. Oh, busy bodies. But Chaplain Schmidt, to use our military analogy a little bit more, when he was on post and he needed information, he knew to talk to the busybodies. And the best busybodies I have found were the military police. Not only did they know everything, they were willing to share everything as well, which is a lovely trait. Paul tells us not to be lazy, to be in order, to work that our vocations are to care for our families and to work for them, to care for the church and to work for Christ in this kingdom, that his kingdom here and now. We are not called to be lazy, but to work. And let me ratchet this up a little bit more. As you read the gospels and heard them read over and over to you, let me ask you this. Do you think Jesus was a lazy man? He was literally walking to heal someone and healing people on the way. He was feeding the thousands. He was healing and healing. Even when he sat in a wedding, and I had the joy of that the other day, sitting at the reception, and I'll tell you as a pastor, receptions are nice because I just get to sit there, <laughs> right? It's really nice. I love them. But they came to him and said, fix this because the family's pride is at hand. And he did. He would go off to be by himself and the crowds would be there. And let's not talk about Holy Week if we want to talk about work. In fact, every pastor I've ever heard complaining about working in Holy Week too much, I roll my eyes. Not literally, figuratively speaking. R Holy Week, Jesus starts off with a parade. That seems like work. And preaching and teaching, that's work. And then giving the church a new sacrament, that seems like work. Being arrested and standing on trial for things that he did not do, that seems like pain. Whipping, beating, lied to, spitting on, that seems terrible. Oh, after all that, he has to take up a cross, walk it to a hill, <coughs> die for the sins of the world, that can't be easy. And then three days later, raised from the dead victorious. That's a work of weak. He started off with a parade and ended by saving humanity. That's work. That's what our Lord does. And he does it because he loves us and because that's his vocation, Savior. You will not get a better master than Jesus to work for. He has freed us from our sin and from death and the devil. And now he has given us the opportunity to work in his kingdom with him, where his yoke is is light and we too work in God's kingdom I know some of you think work might be a negative word I hope not but if you do I hope that you can see that working in God's kingdom is joyful it's work and it struggles but you're part of it and that you don't have to be negative about it in fact, I promise if I could sit down with each and every one of you and talk, we can find something in this church, in this community, in this district, in this synod, in this world that the church does that you're gifted at that you could do. Oh, Pastor Schmidt, I don't like talking in front of people. I have a thousand jobs that don't involve that. Oh, Pastor, I love talking in front of people. I got a thousand jobs that does that. Pastor, I hate traveling. I got a thousand jobs that can do that. I love traveling. I got a million jobs that can do that. 
When I worked in a factory, I found out that there's a... I'll raise, who here has worked in a factory? Please. All right. It, so tell me if I'm wrong. Worst thing you could do is stare at the clock. Right? Yeah, I'm getting a lot of nods. Yeah, good. Norths and Souths. Yes. It, you've got to take your watch off, stick it in your pocket. I worked when they had no cell phones, so that wasn't an issue. Uh, but if there was a walk, clock wall or clock on the wall, you would just do everything to not look at it because that made the day slower. But if you worked hard, you took pride in your work, and you stayed focused on that work and really working hard and doing a good job, it felt like those eight hours went quick. And then you could walk out of that place and go, I did good work today. I earned my wages and I feel good. And we've all had that experience at some point in our life where you've worked hard and all of a sudden the day is gone. You see, working for God's church is exactly like that. Staying focused on the work that the Lord's given us. Enjoying the work and working hard at it. It's pleasurable, in fact. We see what Jesus has done for us. He saved us. And now he has made us his children in his kingdom to get his work done. The Holy Spirit worked very hard to embed in our heart faith. Our Heavenly Father worked very hard creating this beautiful world we live in. And our Lord Jesus worked very hard on a cross to save us from our sins. Maybe God knows what he's talking about. Maybe hard work to the glory of Jesus Christ will bring you true happiness and true joy. Try it. You might be surprised. Or, if you are listening to the word of God, you won't be surprised. It's a wonderful thing to work for our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds on Christ Jesus. Amen.